Now let's agree on a path, actually. What's in and what's out? We're going to be talking about testnet, local net, and beta net. We're going to be talking about contract literacy, NFTs and fungible tokens, core contracts, cross contract calls. All that is in this week. But what's out this week? Mainnet. We're not going to be talking about deploying the mainnet because there's more that you have to do. If you really want to deploy a trustless application, you need to manage your keys and remove them. In that way, the contract can't be modified, for example. You've got to figure out what to do with the money that that contract might collect or control, identities, and so on. There's all sorts of details on mainnet that are outside the scope of this conversation. But we have several applications deployed on mainnet. And so if you're curious, if you're ready to do that, more power to you. That's fantastic. But we're not going to dig into that together this week. We're also not going to talk about contract security because there's all sorts of little details about how contract security works that are outside the scope of this week. So maybe another week or maybe another month of work together might give us access to building for mainnet, talking about contract security, token economics, uh, and, and what it means to actually design for incentivization, uh, mechanism design, and so on. We're not going to talk about any moonshot ideas like I want to port Uniswap to near. Good luck to you, but it's not going to happen in a week. If you gave me a week, I might not even be able to tell you how long it would take me to do it. Um, and we're not going to talk about sharded compute and storage in terms of the details. Remember the battery that we saw before, the car engines that we saw before. We're not going to dig into those details. We're going to stay up here to talk about reading, writing, testing, and deploying contracts. This is the schedule for the week. Every single day, today's our first, we're going to have meetings at 3 p.m. UTC. Monday's 60 minutes, Friday's 60 minutes, every other day is 30 minutes. During these meetings, today is our kickoff, welcome and kickoff. And then Friday is our demos and we'll say goodbye. And Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we might talk a little bit about process, answer some questions, share some, share some aha moments, and we'll have 30 to minutes to two hours to do that together. No problem at all. And uh, the goal on a daily basis is today, there's work to do. You should be reading contracts. And if it's very late for you, for example, then, then start early tomorrow. You should be reading contracts. Uh, writing contracts tomorrow, testing contracts, then deploying, and finally, demonstrations on Friday. This is what you'll demonstrate. Something like this. So several people were asking, what are we gonna learn this week? What are we gonna submit in a week? This is what you're gonna submit. This is the answer to your question. At the end of the week, each small group is gonna present a project of their own design and development, and the scope is defined by this example. There's a repo here that you'll find. This gives you an idea. It's gonna include contracts, Rust, assembly script, maybe both, maybe a mix, unit tests, simulation tests, just the mock-up. Please ignore the temptation to build a front end. You can if you want to, but ignore the temptation because that's the easy work. It's, it's tempting to focus on the thing that we know to ignore the difficult part. Instead, stay confused this week. Focus on the most difficult aspect of the work this week. Focus on the contracts, reading, writing, testing, and deploying them. And then documentation, exactly as you see here, build tests, explanations, the example story, proposal. This may be a little bit too small for you to read, but the idea is uh, you can see this repository and see exactly what I'm hoping every single group by the end of this week will produce. You don't have to do this as an individual. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. But as a group, I expect that you'll be able to ship something like this and demonstrate it to us, actually. Last time we ran this, uh, one person, uh, one group, sorry, a team of four or five people was able to build actually a working demo by Friday, but they had already experience building with Nier, a couple of people. And so uh, for them, they were building, it was an exercise essentially. Uh, there was another person who was able to produce this level of work in a week, and they had never built anything on Nier before, and they did it in assembly script. So my recommendation is stay modest, stay to this focus, come up with an idea, I'm more than happy to help you with that. Um, you can certainly ask other people for it. We have lots of examples that we can talk about. Um, contracts, unit tests, simulation tests, mockups, not the front end working, mockups and documentation. And if you want as a moonshot, as an extra step, as a bonus, you can try building the front end, but I would wait until the very last minute to think about that because that's the easy stuff. All right. So the measure is, can we learn from it? And here's basically this kind of defining what success looks like. Here's the list. L1, that's this, supporting others in learning while you learn too. You have the certification after completing the course and you keep the certification as long as you continue to help others and to continue to learn. That, that's how this works. 
It's about evidence. All right. Um, for L2, build and deploy um, a testnet app that grows to 100 users. And for L3, build and deploy a mainnet app that grows to 1,000 users. And, and these are still under heavy development here. So, um, you, you know, if you have some better ideas about how we should kind of measure levels of certification, the goal is to, to make it matter. It should mean something. And it should also be achievable. So there's a balance there. Right. So, so this is, you know, our current estimate here for L1. That's this course. It's about finishing this course all the way to the end, producing that demo. And then to keep the certification, continuing to learn, continuing to help people in the community and lean into this work together. And then what? Maybe after this course, what can you do? You can go and go through the Figment Learn pathway. That, you know, we'll pay you $20 in near tokens for 30 minutes of your time. Uh, this course is also paid, by the way. Um, we have a bounties program where you can solve problems that we've listed for you know a couple of thousand uh, near tokens uh, uh, or a couple of thousand dollars in near tokens, uh, and it, it takes several days, maybe a month or so, to solve those. Depending on the bounty, it could be more. Grants program applying you know ten thousand up to a hundred thousand um, dollars in grants for three to six months of work depends on the amount of work there. The Open Web Collective raised collectively fifteen million dollars uh, U.S. dollars last year. Um, and then Gitcoin Kernel is this eight-week eight program. There's another one that starts in March. If you're curious, I can send you an invitation. Please let me know. So these are some of the things that you can do. Next. What next?